Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Locked on Seminoles. I'm your host, Max, and if you're wondering, yes, I am technically wearing the same shirt as yesterday, but I'm recording back-to-back, so it's only been on my body for one day. Today, we're going to continue with listener questions. We're going to start with the positives about Norvell. If you'd like to hear the negatives, go back to yesterday because I'm a man of complex opinions and I've got both. And then I'm going to talk about why I agree that DJ Williams should be a breakout player this season and uh, what to make of Amari Gaynor's future. Someone suggested he should move to edge and I'm going to look at his pass rushing and decide if I think he'd be a good fit there. So with that all said, we got a great show for you. Let's dive in. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your favorite daily Florida State sports podcast. I'm your host, Max, at MaxMoody17, made it in 2017, I'm incredibly creative, on Twitter. I'm here to bring you daily Florida State content, mostly football related, but you know, we talk about a little bit of everything. I've been covering the team for 20 months, spent five and a half years at that university, grew up in Tallahassee, and I'm a fan first, a person second, and a podcaster third, as are my two co-hosts who are not joining me today. But if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which all of you should, you hit that bell to turn on notifications, well, you'll get to meet Drake and Dave in due time or, you know. It's the internet. Scroll back through some of the episodes and you'll see them there too. If you're on the podcast, you're one of the OGs and we appreciate you for it. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for letting us grow. And thank you for letting us be part of your day by making us your first listen every single day. It's Wednesday as you're listening to this, Monday as I'm recording it, and I am taking some more listener questions as an unofficial part two follow-up to yesterday's listener question episode. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto Amazing Selection. Reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Our first question today comes from Nick Stewart. He's been quite the contributor on YouTube. Nick, we appreciate what you do, man. Thoughtful comments, always bringing the goods. Talking about Mike Norvell, uh, Nick Stewart says, definitely think it appears that the hires slash promotions were lazy. This is about uh, the, in, you know, the, the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks, coach, linebacker slash new co-DC uh, position and keeping the wide receivers coach. But the truth is continuity matters and the coaches that were promoted deserve the opportunity. Atkins is great. Tokar's earned it. And Shannon not only can recruit, but has been a head coach and adds a lot to the staff. It's not a splashy hire like other schools, but I do think we got the right guys for the job and it should help development further by hiring from within and keeping the continuity. Chris from Perry home of the famous Perry Mudbog, I hope. Is that is that Perry, Florida or Perry, Georgia? I'd, if it's Perry, Florida, it's the famous Perry Mudbog. Says, I think as FSU fans, we need to come to grips with the fact that this team was one of the worst in the country when Norvell came in. Bad enough that it was going to take years to get to the point of what we expect. And QBs don't compete for jobs now. I think they went after QBs and none of them were interested. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to dive in. I Look, there is a valid argument that Norvell needs more time. I, I think it's disingenuous to act like with everything happening, he shouldn't get more time. But if you look on my episode yesterday, that doesn't mean we can't be frustrated that isn't happening sooner and say that it needs to happen like this year. Because to me, I think more time applies to last year, right? He got the same number of games as Willie Taggart, and he's going to get at least 12 more. No, wait, Willie was fired during a season. So he's going to get like 16 more games than Willie Taggart. To me, that is enough to prove that you're better than the last guy. I do not, I do not give a ton of weight to the COVID argument because that it, it hindered his progress. Say it that way. Because, again, other people went through it. Nick, I, you know, I'm with you on the continuity thing to a degree, but I think that you had an opportunity here and he squandered it. I think that when you have, look, there's two things that make a good football team, right? From a, from where the coaching, from a coach's perspective that, let me say that better. There are two things a coach is in control of that make a football team better. On-field coaching and play calling and such, personnel decisions, all that, and recruiting. 
one of those has to come up and drag the other to its level to get you to that highest level, right? So if recruiting is lagging, take a school like Cincinnati. I mentioned them yesterday, for example. Well, great coaching can get you to a new level and then recruiting will follow, okay? If on the field play is lagging, well, then a coach needs to be able to recruit to get players in that will drag that on the field play up to the level that recruiting is now getting to. My concern is that neither of those are happening with Norvell. We're winning five games and then we have a class that's supposed to be good. And when all said and done, the dust has settled, the marbles, the die has been cast, the cash has been distributed, all of the metaphors you could use. We have a lower ranked class than Miami and Florida. Plain and simple. I said this was going to be the good about Norvell. Sorry, guys. Didn't take me that way. That being said, again, Chris, uh, you're right. I mean, we are where we are, right? We can't just expect to boom, have kids come in. Does that mean we lower our expectations? Yeah, probably. Does it mean it feels good too? No. No. Here's where I struggle as a fan. There's always this this push and pull, this 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 these opposite forces, right? Of what should expectations be relative to possibility based on people you have on the roster, prior performance, coaching staff, yada yada yada. Versus how as a fan I'm going to feel when that happens. What I mean is, you may have a 12-hour day ahead of you at work. Maybe someone called out on their shift, whatever. It's okay. You expect it going in, but it doesn't mean on hour 11, you're not tired, right? That's just, that's just the way it goes. You're going to be tired after 11 hours of work. Who wouldn't be? I think that's kind of where we are. Like we look at this and we we look at all of the factors that go into the calculus of projecting a season and that will play out on the field during the season next year. And we say, hey, this is probably a seven to eight win team with six wins being more likely than nine. And we say, okay, that's that's realistic. But it doesn't mean that when we're only winning seven games, we're going to be stoked about it. And I think that there's a big contingent of fans out there that are already pre-projecting the feelings they're going to have while watching seven games and ignoring what realistically should be the expectations. Like what I'm saying is I almost think we all think the same thing. We just are talking about different parts of the process. Because I think that there are a lot of folks in our comments that are angry that we're going to win seven games that know we're not going to win 10. And that even I would posit know that y'all are being a little unrealistic saying 10 games next year should be the standard because it's just not the team you took over, right? Relative compared to what has been, sorry, based on what has been said in these comments, like y'all are right. He inherited a absolute dumpster fire. But that doesn't mean it's not going to suck as it's happening. And that's what those folks are expressing. They're saying, if I, if I don't see 10 games next year, I'm going to be furious. And I get that. I'm going to feel the same way because to win seven games means you have to watch five losses and probably a couple nail biters. That's not fun, you know? And then I think the other side of the fan base that's like, hey, we're going to win seven games. We're building, we're climbing, we're getting better. Like we're not delusional to the fact that Florida State has three national championships, three Heisman winners. And if the playoffs had been instituted in the 90s, probably would have won a handful more. And like, we're not naive to that fact that it sucks to be saying, hey, seven games is going to be the expectation with eight or nine, you know, maybe 10 in a crazy year being the ceiling. But we're looking at what we have in front of us and saying, hey, there's no point in getting worked up about, you know, what it should be. We want to talk about what it could be. I don't think either one's wrong. That was, a, I got a bit off topic, but I, I think it all comes from a good place. I think as fans, we kind of have to band together and decide, like, what are we going to do about it? Well, the answer is in the short term, there's nothing we can do about it. In the long term, join the Florida State Boosters. Let's put our money where our mouth is and let's see if we can't, you know, start 
affecting some change. So that way, if Mike Norvell ends up not being the dude, we can go get the dude. And if he ends up being the dude, we can give him resources to keep being the dude. Nick, Chris and Perry, guys, thanks for your comments. I want to move on now and get a little more granular and talk about specific players. But before I do that, I'm going to tell y'all about betonline.net. Betonline.net is so much more than it used to be, folks. Football season may be over, but basketball's in full steam. Both pro and college hoops are going. Sorry, quick water break. You can get all the latest odds, totals, props, all that good stuff, even where the next fired coach is going to land at betonline.net. It's the number one spot for all your betting needs. It's also where you can get all the sports info that you need. Betonline.net is the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Folks, it's not just basketball, right? BetOnline.net's your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, Olympic coverage, ho- it, like all of it. And I almost said hockey twice, but you know, you like English Premier League? Bet on that. The games are on early in the morning. It's it's exciting. So head to the website today, BetOnline.net. Use your mobile device and learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Yeah, yeah, so... so um, if y'all aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. We are 730 strong and we greatly appreciate that. It means the absolute world to us. Didn't think we'd get there, but, um, we're building and, and I hope that it is our, our free flowing, honest opinions from me, Drake, Dave, that, that keep y'all coming back. If y'all have a question, a comment, anything you want to say, please leave it in the comments. We read them. We get to as many as we can. I mean, it's not always possible, but we do, we do our best and, um, you know, I, I I just like telling y'all what I think as I think it. I think that sometimes that comes across as like, hey, Max said this, and, and then he said this. Well, folks, that's because I'm human. You know, I, I can think one thing one day about this team, and then I can totally irrationally think something else a different day, right? Like, I can be totally content with, hey, we're improving. Seven wins is good. And then the next day be furious that we're not going to compete for a national championship next year. And it all comes from a place of love. Similar to all of you, I love this team. Some of my happiest moments are watching this team succeed. And it's look, it's great when we when we're good at other sports. I I love the Sweet Sixteen runs. I love the final. We haven't been to the Final Four, but I love the the softball championships and the soccer championships. And you know, all of that is awesome. But I didn't grow up going to those games. You know, I I, I didn't. I don't remember the walk from the old IM fields into the stadium for baseball or softball or soccer or any of those. Like I remember it for football and I remember the elation that came with victory and the satisfying feeling that came from like January of 2013 until really the next January of us being national champions. And I just want that again. I know all of you do too. And and that's why you're here every day. So I'm trying to think how to read this name. Is it is it Regnes or Regens? R E G N E S zero six eight four says I could see DJ Williams breaking out on offense. His power will help in the red zone and short yardage, and we should be solid up front this year. I could see him leading FSU in rushing TDs. He also talks about defense. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, defensively, Dennis Briggs will have a breakout this year. I could see him playing that Kier Thomas role outside and inside. Think he should start at D end. The interior is deep with Fabian and Coop coming back. Briggs, Fuller, Verse, and McClendon make a nice defensive end rotation. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to start with the offense first, if that's all right, and then go back to the defense because you hit on something that's near and dear to my heart. To me, DJ Williams is positioned to be a breakout star this year. I think star. I don't know. We're going to have a deep. We're going to have another deep rumor running backs. So look, we've got Treshawn Ward. Okay, we've got. Lawrence Toa Philly, who, you know, I like all reports are that he's right there and ready to ready to take that next step. I don't know. I don't know if I buy that, to be honest. I think he's got talent. I think he's got speed, but my man's got to eat more PB and J's. He's got to hit more protein shakes. He's got to put the size on because you're not going to do it out there at 180 pounds. Those days are gone. And then you have DJ Williams, who I think is going to fill an interesting gap. You know, you're losing Jay Sean Corbin, who's what, who's what, 6'1", 220. Um, and Treshawn Ward is kind of becoming your every down back. But Jay Sean 
had Trayshawn behind him to take some of that load off. So it's like, if Trayshawn becomes your every down back, who takes that load off of him? And I don't think it's Toa Philly, and here's why. Nothing against Lawrence Toa Philly, but he is not similar enough to Trayshawn in the way that Trayshawn was similar to Jay Sean Corbin to take the load off of off of uh, Trayshawn Ward. Toa Philly can help do other things, can maybe, you know, he's like mixing in a leg kick or mixing in a, uh, he's the fast guy, or mixing in a head kick, right, or a flying knee versus Trayshawn, who's that kind of jab, jab, body, jab, body, you know, that kind of stuff. But we need someone that's the leg kick, right? Someone that's the calf kick that's just constantly also going to beat on you just in a different place where it's harder to block or it's different to block that's really going to wear you down as well. And that is DJ Williams. Yeah, so you look at a guy that's got that size. I saw him in the spring game last year and we saw him intermittently during the season last year and like he can hit. He's not a fun guy to tackle. 215 pounds in that compact frame moving at speed is is going to soften up a defense. So I think that that is a better recipe to be that second complimentary running back to Trayshawn Ward in the same way that Trayshawn Ward was that second complimentary running back to Jay Sean Corbin than a Lawrence Toa Philly or a Ja'Kai Douglas um, or the the young man that, that we brought in, the transfer from Oregon who's coming off injury. Now, does that mean I, because I you guys call me out on this stuff, does that mean I don't think any of those guys will contribute? That's not what I'm saying. No. It's not what I'm saying. I think Lawrence Toa Philly could have a pretty good year. But I don't think he's going to have the same level of breakout year as DJ Williams could compared to last year. I think he's going to do about what he did last year, maybe with a little bit bigger of a role. Uh, I think that Ja'Kai Douglas is going to still catch passes out of the backfield because there is something about when he comes in motion and is able to get the ball in his hands downfield, he's really darn good at it. But I think that DJ Williams is really going to break out and have, you know, probably a four- five, 600 yard season with a lot of bruising runs that can really soften up a defense. As for red zone, you know, this is always an interesting one because I, I, size is not always the best indicator of red zone running ability in the sense of scoring touchdowns. The bigger guys are typically better at it, but you also need to look at how quickly do they get up to speed because a big guy like a, this was always my complaint with, James Wilder Jr., even though I thought he was a great back, I thought he was a wonderful contributor to our team. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I think there was kind of this thought of, okay, he's huge, put him in the red zone, but he couldn't get up to speed quickly enough. So he really wasn't as much of a threat in the red zone as he was if you could let him get two or three yards into the open field and smack somebody in the mouth. I mean, who doesn't remember that Clemson run where he's carrying people downfield? That's what he'd do once he got ahead of steam. I think DJ Williams is probably similar to that. I don't know if he's got that that quick explosion that you want in the red zone. I'm really going to miss the uh, the Jay Sean Corbin Wildcat because of that. But I, I think Trey Sean is still your your red zone guy, or it's a Lawrence Toa Philly that you're trying to work outside and get him into some space. Um, I, I don't know if he's your red zone guy leading the team in touchdown rushing touchdowns that way, but look for him to be a significant contributor this year. And if y'all need a significant contributor, that's right, I did that, to your car repair efforts, make sure that you're using today's title sponsor, rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So, so why go all the way out there and say, hey, do you know you have this for my car? Okay, you don't. Great. Got to go to another place, all that stuff. When you could just save time and money and use Rock Auto. You're also going to spend more if you go to a car dealership. They'll probably have the part, but they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. So again, go to Rock Auto. I've used Rock Auto several. No, good talking, Max. I've used Rock Auto several times, and you know, to me, it's got the prices that you'd expect from an online retailer like an Amazon, but it's got the ease of navigation that you would expect from a specialty auto parts store. So you're not going to have to wonder, am I getting the actual right model number? Is this really the right thing? Blah 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 but you are going to get a great price. So go to rockauto.com and in there, how did you hear about us? Let them know that Locked On sent you. Quick water break, team. Sorry, that wasn't enough. How much water do y'all drink during the day? I had this conversation with someone at work and they said they drank like six liters of water. Um, I thought that sounded like a ton, but 
I realize like this cup is 30 ounces, which I guess what is a liter? Like a liter's about that, 32 ounces, I think. Um, and I probably drink like 10 of these a day, not 10, but probably seven or eight of these a day. Anyway, I don't know. Y'all drink as much water as you feel you need to. I'm not a doctor here. So I want to get to the defensive side of the ball. And uh, first, I want to talk about the defensive line role. He talks um, Regnes, Regens. I don't know, man. We're going to let me know how to pronounce that, please. Um, talks about defensively, we've got Dennis Briggs Kier, in that Kier Thomas role. And then we're going to have Fabian and Coop coming back. So we'll have Briggs, Fuller, Verse, and McClendon in that rotation. I think that that is pretty exciting. You know, we are going to lose Jermaine Johnson, who is just, I mean, that guy's a generational talent. I don't know how he slipped through the cracks at Georgia because I think if Georgia had known how good he was, well, their D-line was sick. But I don't, you, you got to think if other schools knew how good that guy was, he wouldn't have ended up at Florida State. I, I hate to kind of besmirch our, our great program at the moment, but like that guy was special. I mean, he's going to play, in my opinion, a lot of football on a lot of Sundays. And yeah, but I think you're right. When you have Briggs Fuller verse coming in as a transfer in McClendon, you, you could get close to that production, right? Maybe like, like collectively, I mean, you're not going to have one guy that'll do it, but you could have a very solid stable of edge setters and pass rushers. Um, you know, this year was the first year, really, at least for me in, I, I don't know. What would y'all say? Probably since Brian Burns was here that like, if a quarterback held onto the ball for too long, I thought, Hey, he's probably about to get sacked. Right. I didn't thought that in a very, very long time. And it was because we had Jermaine Johnson there. But you look at some of these guys, and you've got Jared Verse, who will be a redshirt junior. Was he 6'4", 250, coming off the edge? And at Albany, he had, what do you have, seventy in 15 games at Albany, he had 75 tackles with 14 and a half sacks. Now, that's the FCS. And we saw last year with, um, oh gosh, help me out, from Alabama State. He has since transferred. Marcus Cushney. FCS production does not always equal FBS production, but that doesn't mean it can't. And if he can come up with, you know, four or five sacks this year, right? And you can have Fuller and you can have Briggs and McClendon each come up with three or four of their own. Well, okay. You know, as a team, you're looking at 12 to 16 sacks. That's that's not awful, right? You'd like to see a few more. So hopefully the linebackers get in on the party, but I'm really excited about the interior. I think that Fabian and Coop are going to create a very dynamic combo on the inside. Obviously with defensive tackles, you need to know, okay, who are the backups there? They're going to be able to keep them fresh, keep them, you know, able to go play after play. It it just isn't realistic to ask a defensive tackle to take 80 snaps. If you have a team that's running tempo, but for the most part, I, I am very excited about that. I think you've got two guys who can both stop the run. And I don't know so much about, get sacks themselves, but they can contribute to the team rush. By the team rush, I mean, you know, you want you want to see four or five guys rushing almost, you know, encircling the quarterback and then bringing the middle up and then closing the outsides, right? That's one thing I think we did very well last year. I think you look at um you look at the production of a Jermaine Johnson and you wonder like, would he have had sorry, adjusting my mic, would he have had that same production the year before where you didn't have the same caliber of play in the middle. I I don't know because like we highlighted several times in our unsung hero segments where you would see like a Fabian Lovett or Coop clogging up the middle and driving a a, a center back towards the quarterback, which would then lead to a sack on the outside. So if we can get a lot more of those that enable the pass, the outside pass rush from the inside, I think we could have a pretty good unit. Um, linebackers, I know you didn't ask about it, but just talking about it, I I hope we see some improvement there. Um, we've got a transfer that that had 105 tackles last year coming in from UCF. That should be a nice get. I think Amari Gaynor, I mean, this is his year, right? Like we're going to find out this year, is Amari Gaynor going to be the guy? Because 
This is his fourth year here. He put on, what, 15 pounds last year. I imagine he's going to keep the strength gains going. Athletically, he's all there. It's just, can he convert that into play on Saturdays? You know, you've got Kalen Deloach, who was pretty much your best linebacker last year, certainly your best in coverage. Can he take a step forward? Can he still be that same contributor? And are, is there anyone else that can step up and make him not the only guy that can cover anybody at the linebacker position? Because at a certain point, if you only have one guy that can cover at the linebacker position, well, then the equation's pretty simple. Just don't throw at Kalen Deloach. And then you're still going to complete one over the middle because he can only do so much. So we really need someone to step up, whether it's Steven Dix Jr., whether it's Jadarius Green McKnight, whether it's Amari Gaynor, uh, or whether it's Tatum Bethune at that linebacker position. And I'm hoping we see that as well. But more importantly, I'm hoping I see y'all tomorrow. Actually, I won't be here. I'm going to be in Houston, Texas for the rest of the week. If you're in Houston, I don't know. Tell me, like, where should I eat or whatever. Um, that'd be sweet. But I will be back next week. Drake and Dave are going to take care of y'all for the rest of the week. Trust me, you are in amazing hands with my co-host. So please... Keep leaving the comments. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have alerts turned on. And make sure you're getting excited for the season, folks. We've only got a very short, uh, what, seven, six and a half months left. We are almost there. But until then, we'll be here for you every single day. I'm Max, and this was Locked on Seminoles. <laughs>